So as you know, today is February 3rd and our worship tonight is going to focus on two saints who are commemorated on this day. One is Saint Blaise, who was Bishop of Sebaste in the third century. And the other is Saint Ansgar of Hamburg, who was a bishop in the 800s. And we're going to learn more about them in a few minutes. But first, we're going to sing In the Bleak Midwinter. And maybe you can guess why I chose that. gather to worship God, whose creative imagination never fails. For the sake of God, we will search for the outcasts. We gather to praise our God, whose steadfast love never weakens. For the sake of Jesus, we lift up all the fallen. We gather to offer our best to God, who walks with us through eternity. For the sake of the Holy Spirit, we will walk with the weary. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit, that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're reflecting on some saints of old, and we're going to start with uh, Saint Blaise, Blaise of Sebaste. And I found this little blurb, Saints Fun Facts. He was raised as a Christian in a rich family. He became a bishop. But what that doesn't tell you is that he was also a physician. He actually started his career as a physician. Um, anyway, God appeared to him in a vision 
um, and told him to flee. That comes toward the end of his life. Um, and to avoid persecution, he lived in the hills with sick animals and cared for them. He was later captured and imprisoned. Um, and while in prison, cured a boy who was choking on a fish bone. He was ordered to be killed for refusing to renounce his faith, which of course was fairly common. Um, he uh, died in 316, which was actually just three years after Constantine the Great made Christianity a legal religion, a legal religion, not illegal, but finally made it legal. But he lived in a part of the empire where, um, where the ruler was not going to follow the rules. Anyway, so yeah, he studied philosophy in his youth. He was a doctor. Um, he exercised his art, that is medicine, with miraculous ability, goodwill, and piety. And when the bishop of the city died, he was chosen to succeed him. Um, his holiness was manifest through many miracles from all around. People came to him to find cures for their spirit and their body. And even wild animals came in herds to receive his blessing. And then in 316, um, he was arrested. He, and of course, the story of how he saved a boy who was choking on a fishbone. Um, and that happened apparently right in front of like his jailers and the governor and all these people. But anyway, they beat him with a stick, ripped his flesh with iron combs and beheaded him, which was a rather ghastly thing to do. Um, and Marco Polo apparently visited the place where uh, he was martyred. He is the patron saint of wool combers, people who comb wool, make woolen stuff. And he's also uh, the patron saint of throat diseases. And he's technically not on the Lutheran calendar of saints. But our Orthodox, Catholic, and Episcopal uh, brothers and sisters do uh, keep St. Blaise's Day. And the bottom little picture there, you can see someone um, receiving this special blessing, St. Blaise's blessing, which involves holding these two crossed candles near a person's throat. And then there's a little prayer for healing and health. Like I said, it's not one of our traditions, but it happens to fall on this day. So I've always thought it was kind of interesting. The saint that we do honor and commemorate on February the 3rd is Saint Ansgar. And um, his story actually begins in France where he was born and um, he was orphaned at a young age and uh, because he was, after his mother's death, he was brought up um, at Corby Abbey and was educated in a Benedictine monastery in Picardy, which is part of France. And then he um, ended up in Germany and was sent in 822. Um, he was actually sent to Germany as a missionary um, where he became a teacher and a preacher. And then a number of them, he went with some other monks and they went to Denmark uh, because they were trying to bring the good news to all of those places. That's why I've given us a map. And so they ended up in Denmark, which on our map is the little yellow area. And then they ended up in Sweden and they were trying to bring Christianity to different people there. And it's very interesting in the um, 800s, he actually was designated the apostle of the north. That was kind of his job. Um, so he spent a significant amount of time in Germany and in Denmark and Sweden. Um, he became the Bishop of Hamburg in Germany, which is in the northern part of uh, Germany. And um, Anyway, he spent many decades working in those areas and all of it was like destroyed because 
the Germans and the Swedes and the Danes weren't really wildly um, accepting of Christianity. So they'd make some inroads, start a little church, and then of course some marauding Vikings would come and mess everything up. So um, yeah, so it, it, it's kind of interesting. He was very persistent and resilient and continued on. He's, uh, he was noted as an extraordinary preacher, um, a humble priest. He was devoted to the poor and the sick, he, um, imitating the Lord in washing their feet and waiting on them at table. Um, he did die peacefully in spite of all the Viking marauding and all of those things uh, that went on um, at the time. And after his death, Sweden once again became pagan because like I said, they only made a few inroads. And it wasn't until two centuries later that the Scandinavian countries were actually really became Christianized. They were, Christianity was a hard sell there. Um, but anyway, that is uh, the story of St. Ansgar and the statue there is um, from the city of Hamburg where he served as bishop for the last 13 years of, of his life. And he, there is a connection here in the United States because there was a school, a parochial school that was set up at Red Wing, Minnesota and it was initially named the Minnesota Elementar Schola. That was its Swedish name. And then in 1865, it was named St. Ansgar's Academy. Today, we know that school as Gustavus Adolphus College. So St. Ansgar even has a connection with us here. Um, and so he's like, I think what we see with, um, with both of these saints, of course, is that they were, um, St. Blaise was a physician. He was very much about caring for people, trying to make sure that they were healed when they were hurting. He even cared for animals, which is a lovely creation theme there. And of course, St. Ansgar's reputation was, again, for taking care of the poor and being especially mindful of their needs. So although they lived a long, long time ago, and you may never have heard of them before, they are part of that great cloud of witnesses that surround us and give us good examples for how we are to be about Christ's ministry. So having said that, we can move on to our hymn of the day. which calls us to think about ministry and mission too. Yeah. 
Christ is our friend. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we praise you for your servants, Blaze and Ansgar, who made the good news known in distant lands. Raise up, we pray, in every country, heralds of the gospel, so that the world may know the immeasurable riches of your love and be drawn to worship you. Lord, hear our prayer. Draw your church together, O God, into one great company of disciples, together following our teacher, Jesus Christ, into every walk of life together serving in Christ's mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love wherever you will send us. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, Save us from, from the time, time of trial, trial and, and deliver, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And this is a blessing for those who have far to travel by Jan Richardson. If you could see the journey whole, you might never undertake it might never dare the first step that propels you from the place you have known toward the place you know not. Call it one of the mercies of the road that we see it only by stages as it opens before us, as it comes into our keeping, step by single step. There is nothing for it but to go and by our going, take the vows the pilgrim takes to be faithful to the next step, to rely on more than the map, to heed the signposts of intuition and dream, to follow the star that only you will recognize, to keep an open eye for the wonders that attend the path, to press on beyond distractions, beyond fatigue, beyond what would tempt you from the way. There are vows that only you will know, the secret promises for your particular path and the new ones you will need to make when the road is revealed by turns you could not have foreseen. Keep them, break them, make them again. Each promise becomes part of the path. Each choice creates the road that will take you to the place where at last you will kneel to offer the gift most needed, the gift that only you can give before turning to go home by another way. Amen. And our closing hymn is The Lord Now Sends Us Forth. we 
we were meant to do in Jesus' name that falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray to do your will today. Go in peace to know, live, and share Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.